Come on, give somebody a high five or a high elbow, or whatever you want to do. Amen. Tell them you're welcome in the house. Come on, give Jesus a big shout of praise. Woo-hoo! You may take a seat very quickly. Hallelujah. I almost don't want to really preach, amen. So I'm closing, amen. <laughs> so when I don't when I'm giving short messages, I start with I'm closing first. So you know that's the first of three. First of three that every preacher has, amen. You guys are not laughing or you guys are so much in the presence, amen. That's good. You guys are holy, amen. Ah, oh, Jesus. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> Woo. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know what I'm going to preach. <laughs> God is so good. He's so kind. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Anybody want to preach today? <laughs> Kitso. Kitso already gave the word. Amen. I'm going to just decorate some stuff. Amen. Hallelujah. Hmm. Hallelujah. You know, when God comes into a room, you've got to recognize, amen, amen. What happens when the king of glory comes in? Hallelujah. You see, Moses didn't get the privilege of seeing him face to face, amen. There was a limitation to his worship. He, in the Old Testament, there was a limitation to worship, amen. They, only the priests could dwell in that holy, holies of holies, amen, amen. Do you know we have no limitation on our worship? Amen. You can leave this room and enter into dimensions with God. Hallelujah. Praise God. You know, the thing that fear, fear works on, fear hopes for, and fear depends upon is the unknown. Praise the Lord. Every time there's an unknown, that's when fear can work and fear can, fear can dwell in somebody's life. Amen. When you don't know where you're going, you fear. When you don't know where you're going, how you're going to make it, you fear. When you don't understand how things are going to happen, you fear. Praise God. Because the flesh likes to know where it's going. It likes security. Praise God. You see, the flesh works on something called self-preservation. Hallelujah. Praise God. Amen. And so when we, when we, when we, have, when we, when we are in the, in the um, arena or we're living by the method of self-preservation, oftentimes it's about protecting it's about getting it's about gaining it's about it's about it's about awareness awareness of the self to protect the self amen praise god but when there's no fear when there's no fear now your life becomes about not aware of you but you're completely aware of god hallelujah you're completely aware of of what he's doing in your life. You're completely aware of where he's taking you. You're completely aware of, of his statues and his promises. Amen. Praise the Lord. That's why the Bible says perfect love. Cast out fear. Because the moment you step into eternity with God, you begin to see from eternity. You don't see from where you are right now. You see from the prophetic vision of God for your life. Amen. And you understand when the Bible says in Romans 8 verse 28, it says all things work together for good. Amen. And so it now no, it doesn't come about knowing about what's happening, amen? It comes about knowing him, amen? Praise God. So I start forgetting about what I know, amen? I start thinking about how much do I know him? I'm going through a storm, but how much do I know him, amen? I'm going through an issue, but how much do I know him? I may be going through suffering, but how much do I know him? Because if I know him, guess what I know? I know that he knows that he makes a way out of no way. Oh, God, I'm talking to myself here. Amen. The library's back. So praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He makes a way out of nowhere. Amen. So I don't know. I don't need to know how. I just need to make sure I'm in him. I just need to know. I need to make sure I'm connected to him. I need to make sure I'm from him. Hallelujah. So your perspective changes. No longer are you trying to make it yourself. You're trying to make more of him in you. Praise God, because your mathematics has been upgraded. You're no longer on primary school maths, you're on secondary school maths, amen? Then you leave secondary school maths, go to A-level maths. And if you're really smart, go to university maths, then go to master degree. Some of you get upset now, I'm talking about maths, amen? They're like, oh, we was never good at that, amen? But the equation 
changes, amen? Because you start looking at things, you're saying, wow, wow, what answers my trouble? Worship. <laughs> what changes my season? Prayer. Amen? Amen? What, what can break open things I want to be broken open? Amen? Is when I enter into the supernatural, so my priority changes. Amen? So if I know I can get what I want by not, want, by not chasing it, what do I do? I chase after the one who can get it for me. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And everybody looks at you foolishly because you suddenly are not aware of you. You are aware of him who sent you. You are aware of him who keeps you. Him who protects you. Him that knows you. Him that plans things for you. Him that makes things open for you. That him is Jesus. That him is God, the King of Kings. And the more I can stay aware of him, is the, is the more I can stay out of me. Praise God. Because me is full of self-preservation. <laughs> Me is about full of, full of my own way, full of my own, in, you know, I, I said this joke before, the Bible of me, amen? Chapter 1, verse 1, amen? Failure. Chapter 2, verse 2, disappointment. Chapter, two, verse, chapter 1, verse 3, amen? Shame and disappointment, amen? Because every time I try to plan my way in him, I can't get out, amen? But when he comes, when God comes, amen? Praise God. When the Father reigns on us, speaks to us, breathes on us. Amen. Come on, that's all you need. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. But how do you know you love him? Praise God. Well, I just, you know I was just starting. I just made introduction. How do, you know, how do you know you love him? Amen. Because we don't know. He loves us. We know he loves us. But how do we know we love him? Praise God. Do you know your love can be measured? How much you love somebody can be measured? It can be mathematically plotted on a graph. <laughs> calculated. How much you love things, people. How much you love... Um, how much you love, how much you love your television can be calculated, your phone can be, they, that's why they keep a tab on how much time you spend on your apps, because they know you love this app more than the other app. <laughs> you love the app, you love the banking app. Some people like to check their balance all the time, checking, 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 checking. Oh, still 59p. Checking, 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 checking. Oh, still 59p. Then interest, 1p. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. You still wouldn't give an offering, amen? I'm joking. Praise God. <laughs> Some people always do. But, you know, but, you know we, have to, we have to know, amen, that God measures our love. God measures our love. Do you know one of the weirdest things in the scripture, if you read that scripture properly, when Jesus was in the temple, and Jesus is stood over the offering. I just fascinating by that scripture. He stood over the offering, and he's watching them give money. And if I did that, you'll put me on every kind of news channel, <laughs> This pastor, obsessed with money. Amen. But look, he stood over the money and he goes, ah, the woman, that woman gave more than all of you. And she put a couple of pence in. What was he measuring against? What was he measuring against? How did he know she gave more? But in the physical, she gave in what? One mite? Equivalent maybe or 50p, a pound? And he says, she's given more. Amen. Amen. Because her giving was all she had. Praise God. Praise God. You see, when we give and when we love, if it's not everything, it's nothing at all. Praise the Lord. That's why, that's, why, that's why we talked about last week. Did we talk about last week? I think we talked about this last week. Acts chapter 5, Ananias and Sapphira, when they held back their portion from God. And the Holy Spirit was upset. And the Holy Spirit says, why have you lied to me? Why have you done this? Why have you come with me with half? Praise the Lord. And you see, sometimes this is where, this is where we have to understand that what half does. Amen? The Bible talks about in Genesis 4. Genesis 4, Genesis, Genesis 4, praise God, with, with um, um, 
uh, the brothers. Cain and Abel, thank you. Amen. Amen. Cain and Abel. Amen. And Cain gave an offering. Amen. And also Abel gave an offering. And the Bible doesn't tell you much about their offering except Cain gave an offering from where he works. Abel gave an offering from where he works, praise God. And the Bible says that Abel gave the firstlings of his flock. Amen. He gave what we call a sacrificial offering unto the king of kings. But Cain got some little flowers, got some little fruits, whatever, put it to God. God says, I don't want it. What happens when God doesn't want? Why? I mean, not what happens. Why wouldn't God want your offering? Praise God. Have you ever gotten a gift from somebody? Someone give you a gift and they bought you like a nice top. They know you like this top. And you look at this top and you're thinking, I don't really want it. Because I know what you really think about me. <laughs> Have you, is, that, is that just me? I'm being real here. Amen. I've gotten gifts. I'm like, take it back, man. <laughs> is the receipt in there? Because <laughs> I know where it comes from. Amen. It's a compulsory gift. Amen. You're under compulsion. It's like someone put a gun to your head and say, please, here you go. Please accept this gift. There's a gun to my head. So with God, it's not about what you do. It's with what motive you do it. Amen. That is what he looks at. It's not about what we do when we come to him. Praise God. The Bible says he's not a respecter of persons, but he respects people that know how to give unto him. Praise God. He doesn't, he doesn't distinguish us one above another, amen, but he distinguishes worship above worship. He distinguished giving above giving, amen. He knows those who work and live from a sacrificial place and a sacrificial realm where they can give of what and all they have to him. Amen. When we talk about giving, people think about money. It's not about money. Amen. This is more than money. It's more expensive than money. Praise God. Let me go to some scripture. Go with me quickly to Luke 18, 18. Praise God. Luke 18, 18. I'm closing. That's my second closing. Amen. I'm not going to spend long. Luke 18, 18, amen. If you're there, say praise the Lord. If you're not, say help me God. Praise the Lord. And the Bible says Luke 18, 18, and a certain ruler asked him saying, good master, what should I do that I should inherit eternal life? And Jesus said to him, why callest thou me good? None is good save one, that is God. Thou knowest the commandments, do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not steal, do not bear false witness, honor thy father and thy mother. And he said this, what did, what did he say? He said, all these things I have kept from my youth up. Now when Jesus heard these things, he said to him, yet lackest thou one thing. Praise God. He says, Sell all that you have and distribute unto the poor and thou shalt have treasure in heaven and come and follow me. And when he heard this, he was very sorrowful for he was very rich. And when Jesus saw that he was very sorrowful, he said, how hardly shall they have riches enter into the kingdom of God. For it's easier for a camel to go through a needle's eye than for a man to enter into the kingdom of God. Praise the Lord. Now, what's strange about this story is that the man, is, Jesus is not actually taking anything away from the guy, the rich young ruler. He's actually exchanging. Praise God. And when he's exchanging, he's saying, listen, I'm going to take away your earthly riches. Praise God. Give it away. Give it away. And when you read the text, he says, I'm going to put onto you heavenly riches. I'm going to give you treasure from heaven. Amen. So the problem was he wasn't, not that, not that he wasn't getting something back, is that his value system was in the wrong place. When your value system is in you, you're going to miss God. Amen. When your value is in your life, you're going to miss his life. When your value is in your way, you're going to miss his way. Praise God. And the rich young ruler realized that my status, my value, my understanding, my, my, my revelation of myself comes from what I've gained and what I can gain for myself. Praise God. 
And you see, when you understand him and you know him, you understand it's not about me. I can't gain him without losing me. Am I making sense here? Amen. And when you understand it's about that you cannot, you cannot gain God and keep you. Amen. God will, God, that's why Satan learned how to trade from God. Satan was a trader, praise God. But God works in this beautiful exchange. He says, give me more of you and I will give you more of me. Give me all of you and I will give you all of me. Praise the Lord. The reason we can't give him all of us sometimes is because we're just like the rich young ruler. We got something good, but it's not perfect. We got something wonderful, but it's not majestic. The rich young ruler, he was quite cocky. Can you imagine him? He was like, yeah. Mate, I've got it all. Done it all for my youth. <laughs> Cockney, rich young ruler. <laughs> Praise God. I think you're nice to laugh a little bit. <laughs> Can you imagine that? Amen. And then look, he says to him, he says, Jesus says to him, yes, yes. I know where your treasure is. Amen. If you want to open up the treasure of heaven, God is going to always ask you to sacrifice where your heart is first. Praise the Lord. He's going to say to you, right, out of that worship experience, now sacrifice. You sow into, you sow something that's expensive to you, and I'll show something that's even more better for you. Praise God. And that man, that rich young ruler was very sorrowful because he didn't understand that when God wants to take you up, he wants to see what you want to let go. Amen. He can't take you up without letting you letting go of your pride. He can't take you up without you letting go of your excuses. He can't take you up without you letting go of your worry. He can't give you what you need without you letting go of something. Amen. You see, the self-preservation mechanism wants you to hold on. That rich young ruler says, my value is in the money. I need to hold on. Hold on. My, this, I can't go wild and naked and crazy in worship. I need to hold on. You see, self-preservation is stopping you from getting something from the heavenly host. What's, why, how come we went to the same school? How come we went to the same job interview? How come I do the same thing as you, you go up and I stay the same place? Because our worship is different. The only thing that describes Christians from Christians is levels of worship, is levels of sacrifice, is levels, amen? Like Tony said, what did he say? Um, Solomon gave a thousand burnt offerings. He wasn't playing. He wasn't playing. He's going to show you that, listen, I, don't, I can give you 10 burnt offerings, God, but I want to give you something costly. Praise God. The Bible talks about in 1 Corinthians 21, when David is having to build the threshing floor and he goes to Ornan, the Jeb Jebusite. And the thing about the Jebusites, they were the original builders of, the, of Jerusalem at the time and before. And he went to Ornan, the Jebusite, and he said to Ornan, he said, listen, let me buy your threshing floor to build an altar for the Lord. Amen. The reason why sometimes what God wants altars, even on threshing floors, because the threshing floor is a place of separation. Amen. You see, God wants to separate us from us before we work. Worship him, amen. Our worship has got to be pure and sanctified, and it's got to be in a place of reverence before he says, I want it. Praise God. So he was teaching David. He said, David, this is what I'm gonna get you to do. I'm gonna get you to understand worship. Worship doesn't come from you, it comes from a place of freshing, amen. It comes from a place of a, a place of, of mix, a place of separation. It's when you get to separate you from you, that's when you enter into realms of worship. And David said to me something so amazing, which I love. He said to all and all and the Jebusite recognized David as king and he all named the Jebusite and he said to the all named Jebusite he said he said I don't want to get this threshing floor for free I want to pay for it praise God this process I want to pay the price to get my to, to, to have the right to have my altar on this place of worship amen See, some of us, we, don't, we are afraid of paying the price. We're afraid of going through the pain. But God is saying that sometimes in order for a, a, a branch to bear fruit, it has to be purged. A tree, sorry, to bear. It has to be purged. And sometimes David understood the processes of God is that sometimes there's things that need to be paid for in the spirit. Hallelujah. Before the heaven can open up for me. 
Jesus was like, give that money, pay that money to the poor. The heaven was going to open up for you. Praise God. When you start understanding spiritual things, spiritual things open up for you. God starts looking at you differently. He says, wow, wow, you're sacrificial in the spirit. Amen? Amen? Do you know what I love about the guys in the week? You know, they come and they spend 10 hours. I know some of us work and we can't spend 10, but they spend 10 hours, five hours praying. Amen? I'm spiritually jealous. <laughs> I can't do that all the time. Amen? But they come and they do the house of prayer because it costs it costs. It costs. Praise God. Some of us, we've got to be willing to pay the cost in the spirit to go higher in the spirit. Praise the Lord. We, we, we've been so conned by this name it, claim it, shame it, grab it, take it, Christianity, amen, that we live shallow lives in self in fear. Praise God. But God says, if you want to come up to the next realm, it's going to cost Jesus said to his disciples, follow me, leave everything, follow me. That's your cost. See, everybody's got a cost. They've got a price they've got to pay. And when you find your price, amen, that's when you start seeing your next season of glory open up. God might say, this is your cost for this season. At least turn off the TV and pray for me for at least two hours. That's too expensive, God. <laughs> Come on, we bargain with God, isn't it? God tells us to do things, we bargain. God says, two hours worship. You'll say, oh, I'll give you an hour. Then he'll say to you, no, 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 no. An hour, an hour, two hours. He goes, no, 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 what about 45 minutes? What about breaking it down into 20 and then five and then five and then five and then five and then five? And, then five? and we start bargaining because we're so consumed with preserving what we have. But when you have, it's not good enough. That's why we're praying in the first place. <laughs> what the money you have is not rich enough. That's why you need money more. You know, we're not enough. Why do you think the rich? Why would a rich young ruler go to Jesus with money, doing all the commandments? Because something in him told him he was not enough. He was not there. Think about it. Rich young ruler who is devout keeps all commandments. Suddenly we understand that something in his spirit he knew. And God didn't go for his money. God for what, where his heart was. Praise God. See, God, when he wants you to pull you to the next level, he's like, right. Abraham, your son, your only son. Amen. I'm t take him. That one you've been, you climbed on Sarah as an old man. Can you imagine that? 99 and 99 coming together. Some of you kids, cover your ears. <laughs> Unmarried folk, cover your ears. Do you know? And then Sarah, uh, old woman, uh, out comes this little baby. <laughs> Where are you taking my son? Where are you taking my son? <laughs> and then Isaac's even going, Dad, where are you taking me? Come on, son. <laughs> you got to see the story. You got to see the story. 19, he's 99. Amen. God said we can make him a father of nations. No, nothing. And, for, and, and, and out of preserving his title of father of nations, he jumps into Hagar. All of a sudden, Hagar produces Ishmael. And next thing you know, there's mosque everywhere. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> That's the lineage. That's the lineage of Islam. They say Abraham, uh, Ishmael, and, and somebody else. We say Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And they say the lineage. And David is Dawood. Mary is Maryam. Everything is copy and paste changed. Because Abraham was trying to preserve his flesh. When you're trying to preserve your flesh, you're trying to cut corners with God. Amen? God will say, wait for the right one. No, this is the one. This, is the, this must be the right one. Praise God. And then you start jumping into a relationship that God hasn't ordained because he looks like the right one, but he doesn't smell and sound like the right one. Amen. Oh, he's good, but he just smokes a little bit. Just a little bit. Just a little weed. It's okay. 
And you're wondering, you're saying, and you're, then you're praying for God to bless the one you picked. Father, Lord, bless this one. You said you would make him a big man of God. And God is like, no, I didn't. No, I didn't. You say, oh, please, God, yes, you did. Yes, you did. Then we get into Christian witchcraft, amen, where we start trying to manipulate prayers, amen. Well, if I'm a woman of God, and I'm a man of God, and the person gets with me and they're not the right one, then they must come into my ministry and my anointing will cover them. And then you start manipulating. Meanwhile, John is sitting there with his glasses on. Not that John, praise God. It's just a name came in my head, amen. John is sitting his glasses on and he's saying, the Lord said I'm your husband. You're like, oh, the Lord rebuke you, John. <laughs> Meanwhile, John is faithful, he's loving the Lord, he's praying, he's doing all the right things. And that's not what you want. Because your flesh says you deserve this. And you've got one foot longer than the other, but that's, anyway, don't worry. <laughs> we all want something that we think is, we want something perfect, something wonderful. When we know how we look on a, mo on a Monday morning. <laughs> Amen. It didn't look right for Abraham. So he jumped into a Hagar, amen? He, and he said, and he says, Sarah, please, this must be God's will. Out came Ishmael. But then later he understood and got Isaac. You know what Isaac means? It means laughter. <laughs> In my old age, finally. <laughs> but God had to say to him, listen. You are Abraham, maybe by name. Let me make you Abraham by nature. You've got to pass your test. You've got to pay your price. He goes, take your son and sacrifice him on the mountain. So imagine old Abraham uh, holding him. And can you imagine when he laid him down the altar, how long it probably took to cut his head? Uh, this 99 old man that... Dad, where's the offering? Where's the offering? It's coming, son. Ah. <laughs> so finally God says, no, now I know. You need to give God a now I know moment. You need to be a now I know Christian. Amen. You need to be somebody that heaven recognizes you because they're seeing that you've gone exceedingly above and beyond. Too many people stay at surface, Chris, Chris, surface level Christianity. Too many people. You stay at surface level and you want mega blessing. Mega blessing, surface level. Praise God. And then we've got people who think they can just religious, re, be religious and, be, and, and pray all day and fast all day and, and read the Bible all day and talk religious, amen. But they don't understand that works. Works can't get you open heaven amen praise god you'll find someone who who does less of that and actually goes and feeds the poor gets more more breakthrough and blessings than you ever got in your life because the currency of the heaven this is what i'm trying to teach you today the currency of heaven is sacrifice praise god if it doesn't hurt while you're doing it I like that. <laughs> if it doesn't hurt, it doesn't work. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. They say no pain, no gain. That's why all of us avoid the gym. Amen. Thank God the lockdown came and it's closed. Amen. Otherwise, Lucian will be punishing me again. My personal trainer, Lucian, will be punishing me again in that gym. Amen. But no pain. Hallelujah. You've got to be a Christian that is willing to go beyond. Finally, yeah, Ram came in the thicket, praise God. And the Lord showed this to Ezekiel. He said there was a man, Ezekiel 47, there was a man and by the pool, the water was at ankle deep. Then it was knee deep. Then it was waist deep. Then it was here. Then it was overflowing him, amen. He goes, what does it mean? It means these are the levels of the anointing. These are levels of, of grace, amen. Praise God. And every time people read that scripture, they keep on praying to be overflowing. Father, make me overflow. Amen. And the first thing God responds to that prayer, he gives you an overflowing test. He says to you, right, we'll start with a little, we'll start with, a, we'll start with this level of sacrifice. Can you offer this to me? Praise the Lord. 
Because this is how I know if you love me. Jesus said this. He said this in John 14. I think verse 13 he says, he goes, if a, he goes, a man lays down his life for his friends. Praise God. He goes, if, you know, if, he, if a man, if, he goes, he, goes oh, he also said, if a, if a man is to be my friend, he should do whatever I say. Praise God. So, so Jesus is saying that, wow, if we're to be friends, you've got to first lay down your life and you've got to do what you say. That's when you know, that's when I know you love me. Amen. But what is doing what I say and laying down my life cost me? Cost me me. Because if I'm doing what you say, I can't do what I want. If I'm doing what, I, what you want, I can't do what I want, what you want. Praise God. And so sometimes a lot of people don't understand the battle for the blessing is basically in you denying yourself. Praise the Lord. That's why Paul said, I crucify. I'm crucified of Christ, which means I am no longer in control of any decision in my life. People see miracles coming out of Paul's handkerchief. They see Peter's shadow healing the sick. They see, they see, they see them raising the dead. Why? Because these are men that refused to have an opinion. They refused to live independent. They refused to preserve their flesh. How, how bad do you want to be? How bad do you want what God has for you? There's treasures in heaven waiting for somebody in this room right now. Praise God. There's treasures in heaven. You know, that's what inspired me when I was younger. I said, wow, how much can I? I like sacrificing. Praise God. Lucian says I like challenges. Amen. But I realize I like sacrifice. I, you know, I like pushing myself to the level. Praise God. I like seeing how much me there's still in there. Because if any of me lives in here, I'm never getting what God really promised me. I realize I have to get rid of it. Praise the Lord. So my whole Christianity is him focused. Is he all in me? Is he in control of me? Is he making my decisions? Is that his choice for me? Does he want that for me? Does he, you see, something changes in you. Praise God. You start seeing the supernatural start following you because the Bible says signs and wonders follow those who believe. Praise God. If it's not about him, do I really love him? Praise God. I'm coming down now, amen? I'm finishing, finishing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Let me tell you something, if you're loving. If you're loving, this is two things. This is how you know if you're loving. Amen? You recognize and you react. That's, the, that's how you know if you're loving. If you're actually a loving person, you recognize and react to others' needs. Does that make sense to you? So if I'm, if I'm actually a loving person, some people think they're loving because they buy things for people. You're not loving. Amen? Some people think they're loving because they smile and they give hugs. You're not loving. The moment I can be here and you can recognize my need and react to it, that's when you love me. Because you stop recognizing your own need you stop recognizing your own want. You stop recognizing what you feel, what your need is. And you've come into the next dimension, which is my need. How many of us really live like that? Praise God. That's what God is challenging. I just, I don't know why I'm giving you this word today. Praise God. It's just coming out of me. Amen. But God is saying, this is what we really need to look at now. Amen. How much do we really love him? Do you recognize and react to his needs? He's like, stay an extra hour with me in prayer. Stay, stay an extra 30 minutes with me. Amen? When you're rushing off to work, amen? And you're sitting on the train and you're about to open OK Magazine, he'll go, it's not OK. Spend some time with me. Do you recognize and react to the needs of God? You know what God will show you when you recognize and react to the needs of God? He will show you the needs of other people. 
you become a supernatural sower. I like the old school blessers, amen? The old school blessers will put your money they give you in your Bible. When, they, when, you're, when you go for the toilet, they'll go there, they'll put the money right in the chapter you're reading and close your book. Hallelujah. Who's ever experienced some old school mothers and fathers in the church, old school mums? That's how they will bless you. And when you get home, you'll see 10 pounds. You're like, mom, mom. Because they live a sacrificial life. When you live a sacrificial life, you're constantly looking for people to bless constantly looking and recognizing the needs of people your ministry your ministry begins when you begin to recognize and react you have no ministry until you can recognize and react praise God you constantly will be aware of the feeling Jesus was constantly aware of the feelings and infirmities of the people to the point he was there with them and he's standing with them and he's praying with them and he's talking to them and he's, and, and, you know, he's traveling all the time and he's, and he's laying hands on them because constantly his life was about the feelings and the infirmities of other people. That's when we enter in. That's when we enter in. That's when we move to another dimension. That's when something will open up. That's when the treasures of heaven will open up for us. Hallelujah. What did he say to Peter? I'm closing again. Amen. He said to Peter, if you love me, what? If you love me again, what? If you love me again, what? What was it? Recognize. React. Peter, when it was time... Peter, when it was time for, 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 for me to be crucified, what did you do? You recognized that your head could have been on the line with me. And you said, I don't know him. I don't know him. I don't know him. See, that's what we are. We're fire in church. When it comes time to you preach the gospel to a stranger, I don't know him. <laughs> when it comes time for you to help someone that is out of your way, oh, can someone else do it? <laughs> This is, this, is, this, is, this is the reality of why we are just like the rich young ruler. Because when the rich young ruler truly had to sacrifice, he said, no. I love you, God. I love you, God. I've kept all the, disciples, the things. But Jesus says, if you love me, get rid of all that treasure you have. Give me everything. And Jesus was like, if you love me, show it. If you... No, you guys don't. <laughs> he says, no. I know where your heart really is. I know where your heart really is. You're giving me a gift, but I know where your heart really is. That's why he says, many, in Matthew 7, he'll say, many will say, I did this in your name. I did that in your name. He goes, depart from me. I never knew you. I knew where your heart really was. I remember I went to prison ministry one time. This is like years ago. And I said to the lady, oh, who come with me? I said, oh, it's so good you come to prison ministry. She goes, yes, yes. I ticked it off my list. And my heart sank. I said, why am I upset with that statement? She goes, I ticked this off my list. God can't say to me, I didn't visit them in prison. <laughs> That's what she said to me. I said, lady, you're not a, you're not a, you're not, you're, I just, something, something I've angered me. I said, visiting people in prison should never be on your shopping list. It's because you should truly care that somebody is locked up and wants a friend. She left the church, but anyway. <laughs> anyway. This is what he's saying to us, amen? Your worship has just begun today. Sunday's first week. Take it into the week. Take it into the week. Take Christianity into the week. Take it into Monday. Recognize and react somebody on the street. Recognize and react somebody in the, in the post office. Recognize and react that your mission is to be a blessing and a servant of people on the earth. Recognize and react that you are the light of God. Recognize and react that you are a child of God. Recognize and react to the needs of God's people around you. 
That's when the supernatural flow is open to you. Hallelujah. We have to get out of doing things because we have to and get into doing things because we want to. I want to give up. Abraham wanted to sacrifice his son. He wanted to give up his Isaac. How many of you want to give up your Isaac? (laughs) One hand. (laughs) How many of you want to give up your Isaac? Your Isaac represents that thing that's ultra valuable to you. That thing that's ultra dear to your heart. That thing that you've waited on God for and you finally got. Maybe that car that you've finally been praying for. God's saying, give it away. You're like, no, no. You finally save up money for a car and God's saying, buy that person a car. No. Because all God is wanting to see is, are you ready for the next level of blessing? Are you ready for the next level of miracles? Amen. This VIP club is for the selfless crew. You're doing everything right. You're keeping the law. You're doing all the things right. You're doing all the things good. Amen. One thing you lack to make it into VIP. Give me your Isaac. Give me your Isaac. Give me the thing that's most dear to you. You'll know when it's that Isaac because it will hurt. And you'll cry as you're carrying it to the altar. You'll cry. Abraham, old man Abraham, crying. Oh, no. He's walking step by step, slowly, pulling it to the altar. But God says, that's what I want. Because inside your heart, the space for me has been taken by your Isaac. Inside your heart, rich young ruler, the treasure is there. That's where your money is. Inside, that's where your idol is. I was with Kitso driving. She played a nice song for me. No, no more idols. I love that song. I started singing it. And God said to me, you know, you have a few idols. I said, Jesus. <laughs> that's why I went quiet some part of the songs. <laughs> God started speaking to me. You have a few idols. I'm like, ah. Oh. And I know what idols have to, what idols means. It means something has to be laid on the altar. The threshing floor. Remember David, the threshing floor? The altar on the threshing floor? The separate threshing. You know what threshing is? Did I tell you? Separating wheat from chaff. You can keep playing that. I'm finishing. I'm closing. <laughs> Hallelujah. He says, listen, that's what I'm going to do with your idols. I need your idols to be on the threshing floor. Before I take you to another level, put this idol on the threshing floor. Praise God. God is saying that this is the time for us now to put it on the threshing floor today. Put the idol, put the Isaac on the floor. There's something that you hold close to you, but it's blocking you from God. It's blocking you from greater intimacy with God. This is separation month. You know, God said to me, I said, God, what is January? January, he said, was purification. That's why I spent the whole time in fasting. He said to me, separation now. He goes, I'm now streamlining you. I'm taking some things out to put some things in. And I'm starting with your Isaac. Come, let's bow our heads. Father, in the name of Jesus. Lord, Father, we thank you, O God, for today, Lord. We thank you, O oh God, for your, the miraculous. We thank you for the supernatural. We thank you, O oh God, for your presence. We thank you, O oh God, Father, right now for doing exceedingly abundantly and above, Father, right now, whatever we can think, O oh God. But Lord, we ask you, O oh God, to locate, Father, our Isaac for us, O oh God. Locate the thing that, to us, that's more precious to us than you, that stops us from really loving you that stops us from being complete lovers of you, God. That thing, oh God, that sin, that obsession, that that something, oh God, that stands in the way of our worship, that comes in the way of our worship, that comes in the way of our, of our, of our, of our understanding of you, God. Lord, we just, we just want to come, Father, right now, Lord, and just, and just release that idol, that thing, oh God, Father that thing oh God Father in 
in Jesus' name. Nobody can tell you what your, your Isaac is. You know, who, you know who your Isaac is. You know what it is. You know what it is that constantly gets in the way of your relationship with God. Maybe it's that reoccurring sin, that presumptuous sin. Maybe it's whatever it is. But God says today, 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 at the altar, at the altar, release, release the Isaac, release the Isaac, release the Isaac. Can we do something prophetic? Amen. Worship team, where are you? Praise God. Hallelujah. Where's Marie? Is she by me? Good. Wow. <laughs> amen. Can we do something prophetic? I want you just to take that Isaac. Amen. Whatever it is, let's put it at the altar. Let's put our Isaac at the altar. Amen. Let's make some space. I don't want to spend long. The service has already been long. But I want us just to put that Isaac at the altar. Praise God. You know that thing that's been blocking you and God? God has said, just come to the altar. Put your Isaac at the altar. Come forward if you need to, if you, if you know, if you know that there's certain things that you want to just lay before God. Lay before God. Just bowing at this altar this morning. Yes, yes. Just come and bow, whatever you want. We're just having free. This is between you and God. You and God. You and God this morning. Come on, this is between you and God this morning. This is between you and God this morning. You just find your space wherever you want to be. You just give it to God. That's what Abraham had to do. He had to give away his Isaac. He had to give it away. What are you going to give away? What do you know you need to give away?
says, cast your burdens, cast them all down. Lord, we lay it at your feet, we lay it all down at your feet. I lay pride down, I lay fear down, we lay it all down at your feet. We lay, we lay, we lay, we lay, we lay it all down at your feet. Yeah, yeah. We lay it all down at your feet. We lay it all down at your feet. At the master's feet, we lay it all down. Rekere bo soko rebese at your feet, yeah. We lay it all down at your feet. We lay, we lay, we lay, we lay, we lay it all down, yeah, yeah. At your feet. We lay, we lay, we lay, we lay, we lay it all down at your feet, at your feet, Jesus. We lay it all down at your feet. Oh, at the altar, we lay it all down. We lay it all down, we let go, we lay it all down at your feet. We lay it all down, we lay our lives down, we lay it down at your feet. We lay it all down, lay down, love us, we lay it all down, yeah. down we will find peace when we choose to lay it down we will find peace we will find peace yeah yeah so lay it down lay it down lay it down lay it down at his feet lay it down lay it down down at your feet we lay it all down we choose to lay it down we choose to lay our lives down all for you Jesus as you gave yourself for us we lay it all down we lay it all down we lay our hearts we lay our minds we lay it all down. We choose to lay it down. We choose to lay it down. Lord, accept our offering. Accept our sacrifice. We lay, we lay, we lay. We lay, we lay it down. Oh, we lay it all down. At your feet, sweet surrender to you, we lay it all down, at your feet, there's no sweeter place than at your feet, Lord, we lay it all down, yeah, yeah, at your feet, we lay, we lay, we lay, we lay, we lay it all down. Hearts and minds, we lay it all down. All our desires, we lay it all down. We lay it there, we lay it at your feet at the altar. We lay it all down. 
we let go when we let you intervene oh lord we lay it down we lay it down we give it to you for you promised in your word that you take care of us lord that you lift every burden so we choose to lay it down we choose to lay the burdens down oh we lay ourselves down at your feet do with us what you want lord we lay ourselves down at your feet we lay we lay we lay we lay ourselves down at your feet it's a sweet surrender we lay ourselves down at your feet yeah there is no sweeter place than at the feet of jesus there is no sweeter place than at the feet of Jesus, there is no better place than at the feet of Jesus. There is no sweeter place. There is no sweeter place. There is no sweeter place than at the feet of Jesus. There is no better place than at the feet of Jesus. There is no sweeter place. At the feet of Jesus, there's no better place.